I was introduced uh, as a reader uh, of Fijian literature, and uh, I am truly that. Uh, my name is John O'Carroll. I work at the university um, in Bathurst, uh, Charles Sturt University, and I uh, teach literature there. And I'm going to talk this time about my reading experience of Subramani. Um, I've been given the opportunity actually to edit uh, a collection of his stories, an augmented collection, pulling together some stories that he's written more recently. And it's one of the uh, classic collections of short stories in Fiji. In my view, probably the finest collection of short stories written in Fiji so far. And I want to talk a little bit about not just those stories, which are going to be collected under the title of the Fantasy Eaters, but some of his other works as well. Um, because over his long career, Subramani has written many things and many kinds of things. And I want to just try and give a bit of a sense of what those are like. Uh, and hopefully some of you may wish to uh, chase that up. Um, so, set in Fiji, uh, often rural Fiji, um, Subramani's writings uh, cover that area, of course, but also beyond in more recent years. Um, one of the first things I think that someone encountering Subramani's work will be, it'll either be his um, South Pacific literature, which is a work of critical uh, analysis, or it will be his creative work in the form of the Fantasy Eaters. And when we read that for the first time, when I read it for the first time, it's quite startling, actually. There's not much for the reader to hold on to. You follow the character around quite closely. You're not given great details, except what would be inside the character's own point of view. I mean, the style's nothing like Franz Kafka, the uh, famous uh, Czech novelist. Not like that, except for this one thing, that you feel like you've just got this one point of view, and it's told to you matter-of-factly in that sort of way. The consequence of this is that you see, in a sense, what the character sees, you hear what the character hears, and to a certain extent you smell what the character smells. So there's a quite a tactile sort of imagery to the stories, and it's fascinating, actually, after having read even one of the stories, one of these really short, short stories, just how much of an impression they make on you afterwards. And years later, you can remember uh, little details um, from particular stories. And for me personally, the story that marked me the most was, was a story called Sautu, uh, which means prosperous place. And the, the narrative lets you know very quickly that there's nothing there, really. Um, just this sort of cleared area uh, on land that those people in that village don't own. And one of the central characters of the story gradually loses his marbles as the story progresses. But as, as it happens, and this only happens over a few pages, um, you travel with him and um, as, as he descends effectively into a kind of madness and you learn why. Um, and, and I won't spoil the story for you. What I'd say is this would be a very good story to read and to think about how some people's horizons are literally not bounded properly. It gives no sort of a limit. So they're not near the sea, there's no real river, there's no mountains, it's just this sort of flat area. And in the fantasy it is, there is, there is an abiding sense, it would have to be said, of bleakness uh, in many of the stories. Um, and if I were going to just say that to you, it would sound relentless, but it, it isn't actually. It has, uh, it's broken up with all sorts of different forms of relief. Um, there are um, stories which, for instance, in Dear Primitive, where you suddenly you get this slightly sarcastic look at um, the engagement of cultures and how it kind of doesn't work. But it's also a bit funny, but at the end, terribly sad, you know, when you have the sense of the sea literally coming in again to a cracked consciousness. Many people sort of look at Subramani's work and say, well, what's the politics of this? What's the sort of 
aesthetics of it. Um, well, to me, the stories are real life shots and they capture the sort of daily realities of people's lives. Um, and if you read them carefully, you will see the suffering there. So if there's a politics, I would suggest it's a politics of a great sympathy, a very deep sympathy for the forgotten people, actually, in the world. Um, people sometimes so desperately poor, they, um, they haven't got the money even to get home. Um, I'm just sticking for a second with the fantasy eaters, just to say uh, you'll find there also um, stories of, of the old gods, if you like, um, religion. And in some of the stories it's, it's, it's about things that are broken down, systems that have been discarded. Uh, you know, Hinduism came out to uh, Fiji with um, the uh, indentured workers in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And this uh, uh, faith has bound a community together but also at times proven to be inadequate. And when it, is when it does turn out to be adequate, actually, it's also problematic, as in the story of Gamaliel's Woman, where the uh, impossible happens, the reincarnation that is so germane uh, actually takes place. But it isn't transformative. It's not one of those things that's horizon-shattering. It's, 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 the world goes on. And at the end, of course, you may be reincarnated, but you still, of course, die in the end anyway. Um, I wouldn't be able to, uh, in, in saying all of this, I think it's important though to say that the, the reach of Subramani's work has spread. Um, his, uh, his writing ambitions subtly increased as he worked through the different genres of writing. He wrote a comic novel in Fiji Hindi, which is the language spoken on the streets of Fiji, and out of that, you know, by his own account, genuine hu humour broke out. For English uh, um, speakers, you can find traces of this in a more recent short story called Exiles in the Park, and in, in a park, I should say. And in that story, um, a character leaves Fiji, migrates almost randomly to Australia, uh, because it just seemed to be the most convenient place to come to, and leaves behind a wife who goes off with someone else. And while he's here, he meets a, a white girl and he marries her. Uh, full Indian style, of course. Uh, but meantime, of course, the other wife turns up and all sorts of uh, comic uh, possibilities ensue. And it it's verges the narrative style is so uh, broken up that uh, at times... You wonder what on earth is going on, but the effect is a sense at once of shattered lives, broken up lives, the migration and all the rest of it, but also of um, humour, um, which is quite um, important uh, to, the, to the work of the later Subramani, if we put it that way. He's also written, I'm told, uh, a new Fiji Hindi book, Fiji Ma, um, which... Um, will reflect in its way on a film that many of us have seen and certainly many people in Fiji have seen, Mother India, which is the capturing, encapsulation of the Mother India myth, you know, the uh, rural socialist fantasy at one level but also uh, the mother of, of the earth and so on. There's a sort of a, uh, a connection there that's made. Um, I'd also uh, say, I think, that um, in working through his stories, the different varieties of works that he's done uh, include things that have really impressed me, uh, such as giving speeches um, at, at societies and writing film reviews in the weekly newspapers and uh, genuinely writing for people uh, to read that weekend. Um, and I think this importance that Subramani attaches to writing and talking about education is one of the themes that's actually abiding in his work. And this brings me back to a, a story that we're going to put in the new version of The Fantasy Eaters, 
uh, from the web of memory into forgetting. And this is where you get finally a glimpse of Subramani's own life, his own autobiographical story, and he himself developing, I think, an interest in the autobiographical uh, genre, because in his earlier works there was just that distance there between him and what he described. It's good to see, I feel, uh, in these later works, a wonderful intimacy, I suppose. Now, if I really had to say one last thing, which really, I think, captures the thing that I think marks Subramani out from all writers, it's uh, two very special stories. One, um, Tell Me Where the Train Goes, and the other one, Captive in a Liberated Bush. Years separate the writing of these two. Both of them are based on historical events. Subramani's read the... Uh, uh, historical accounts, if you like, in each case. In the first one, the um, uh, assault on an um, indentured woman, Kunti, who flees with her son at the end of the story. And, you know, there are scenes there with the uh, overseers that are you know, pretty disturbing, violence and so on, that you can read for yourself, uh, based, though, on history. Um, and he's stuck to the truth in that sense, but tried to imagine what it's like to be that person. And even more so in this recent story, Captive in a Liberated Bush, which is based on a book that we've both read, um, Anirudh Singh's Silent Warriors. Um, Anirudh Singh was abducted uh, after the uh, 1987 coups and bashed, and he wrote an account of it. But Subramani's story actually goes further. It's, it's trying to imagine the actual psyche, the meaning of it. And there's something really profound about that. And there's something at once generous and, as I say, sympathetic. The first word that I used really to try to describe his work is a deep sympathy for, uh, for, for, for any of the characters. And even if at times it might be that you might read of, of a character and think, well, what's that person's story? you'll find a way of, um, of grasping that story through the actual things that happen. And in a sense, when you afterwards reflect on the stories, and this is the thing that I think is really quite um, profound uh, about the works. Um, as to what's next, I'm not sure, but he has written another play called Retreat, um, and perhaps this uh, summarises. There's a character there who's called Malachi, and uh, in that... Uh, play, it's a very experimental play, um, the characters themselves explain what's happening, what's going to happen next in the actual play. Um, and again, a visual image that stuck with me, uh, for some reason I thought, when I, I had to go back and look at it again, I thought it actually happened in the play, but actually it's a character saying it. I'm just going to read the little bit of dialogue. So he says, so Gianni says, what's the next scene? And Malachi says, it's called The Journey Homewards. After battling it out on the stage for many years, the ageing cast will step out of their last play and head out of the artist colony towards the mountains, led by the chief's transvestite daughter. One by one, as they edge further, they'll fall by the roadside with outstretched hands. No one will look back. Um, fortunately, Subramani does look back, um, and I'm really glad he does, and he's uh, shared, you know, with his audience and his readers, I think, a really wonderful world of, um, of characters and of, of memories and of feelings. Thank you.